I just bought 2,000 comics and I really know very little about how to sell them, but in today's video, we're gonna dive deep into the comic book world, how to resell them effectively. We're gonna learn all of the key things to look for from experts, and we're gonna track our sales across this 2,000 comic collection throughout this whole video. So you're gonna see what actually sells, and you're gonna know a whole bunch more about comics than you did before. So let's dive in. So we're gonna get these comics and lay them all out. Now, I really have no idea what is here. The way that I bought these is straight up from Hobby Shop Ron. And when I go and see Hobby Shop Ron, for those that don't know, he just has piles and piles of stuff. Says, bring a van and a trailer. I'm gonna fill it up. We kind of, I pay him a little bit of money. And then if I need to pay him more, I pay him more. And he says, if he needs to pay me back, he'll pay me back. So. That's how we did it here. I bought these for a pretty low amount, not knowing what really is in here. He got them from a house clean out. He just had to take them, so he doesn't have hardly anything into them. <laughs> so we have, gosh, one, two, three, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14 boxes total. This one looks really interesting. Like there's some, some that are marked at like 40 bucks, 40 bucks, 30 bucks. But I, I don't know if these are just gonna be outliers for the oldest or what. And then you got like just ridiculous amounts inside of here. And I'm hoping that they're organized. They're, they're all in bags. Batman Detective Comics, yes. Batman, it looks like they're organized by set. I feel like we're gonna learn that that's gonna be a very important way to maximize our time is by selling them in sets. So that's important to me in reselling is to maximize time. And that's one thing that I do wanna do with this collection. So we're gonna get them all laid out and kind of just see what we got. And we'll probably go through, so there was 14 boxes total. Is that what I said? 13, 14, I can't remember. And we'll go through like three, maybe three boxes at a time, process all those, and then we'll list them, see what sells, and then continue going. And you guys are gonna see it all in one video. So it's gonna be a good one. Okay, here's all the comics laid out. And I think we'll just do like two short boxes, one long box for what we're gonna process. And then all these that are kind of sprinkled out were in that box. And they they seem to be more of a, a mix of stuff. I will say I found Batman year three, one through four. Looks like we have like almost like five sets of these. I would imagine that's gonna be a sellable listing. And the good thing is it's like we do the listing once. All these are in like the same exact condition, same collection, and then we have quantity of four done and whatever that ends up being hopefully they start selling quickly the others if there's sets like this we might set them to the side otherwise i'm going to focus on the the three boxes that we're going to choose because hopefully they're going to be full of some sets so let's see what's in this first box and in the meantime i have a message sent to a comic expert in our discord what am i looking at right now this is a weird box i asked him basically all the rules of thumb of comic collecting selling uh, best ways to sell, best things to look for, all that kind of stuff. So we'll be hearing back from him shortly. And these are look to be all Green Lantern. I hope all the boxes aren't like this, though. Like, that's way less than I thought. Supposedly there's about 2,000 total in the collection, which seems about right. Because there's definitely a couple hundred even in these small boxes, I think. Maybe 150. Look at that, it says Hawk World. Hawkworld. Oh, let's go back here and see if it's still Hawkworld. Nope. Eclipso. Eclipso. Interesting. What do we got here? The Spectre. The Spectre. That looks a little older. Still a buck fifty though. And Hawkman. I was hoping that these would all be from like one set. You got Hawkworlds in the front, but like basically if we had, you know, an entire box full of like Superman or Batman or something. That would be ideal to me because that's one Nightwing. quick listing. Okay, Nightwing, let's see how far back that goes. This is still Nightwing, you got Robin there. Robin, so they do seem to be organized still. I wonder why these ones are boarded. Most of them are not. Oh, okay, so these are a little older, Justice League. I'm trying to keep them in the same order here. So yeah, there's some older Justice Leagues there. I think our work's gonna be cut out for us here. I think, Matt, what we should do is organize them by set on this table, stacked up, and then we'll go from there. 
Okay, good news. That Green Lantern box was completely in order. 60 through 113 without any missing issues. Hi, Jackie. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and then Green Lantern Mosaic was also in there, 1 through 18, complete set. And they're sold on that one for 40 bucks. They're in great condition. That is a super, super easy listing. What do you think about that, Matt? I think it's great. It's fantastic. I'm sure Alpel's happy about that, too. Yes. Complete sets, complete runs. Oh, so nice. Hopefully that's what we continue to find because that would make this process so much easier. Right, Matt's been doing some work, going through some of these boxes. And you guys saw the Green Lanterns that we had in order here, which is a good thing. 60 through 113, we're really hoping we'd find like 1 through 59. This looks like a different line of Green Lantern comics to me. These are two different lines here as well. So mate, it's a completely different box. I don't know if it's related or not. We have to figure that out. We did have uh, 642 through 754 of Action Comics Superman. So that's pretty cool, like no missing numbers in there. These are some random ones on top. You got a one through 13 set right there, some smaller Superman sets and stuff. That's what we're doing right now, is just trying to find as many like complete sets as we can. But man, this is this is a lot. This is definitely a lot. Like we have done uh, on Whatnot before, like unpicked comic lots for a buck a piece. Every dollar it goes up, you get another comic and sold them out pretty quickly that way. But th this time we're gonna try to flesh it out a little bit more and see if that was smart or not. But man, it definitely takes more work doing it this way. Reminds me of the Legos. Yes. The good old Legos. And yes, we know it's Lego as the plural. We all said Legos as a kid, so it's hard to break the habit. I apologize if that offends you, but we'll probably just keep doing it because we can't break the habit. We are going to start listing some of these, and pretty soon I'm going to break down the key tips from our comic expert. Shout out to Jesse for the tips, but this is like Power of the Atom. It's a complete set, 1 through 18. Easy listing. Looks like 30 bucks. Good thing is our buy costs on these is very low. Yeah. Um, we have the question of is it worth our time, you know, to piece everything out, make these sets. It's probably going to take 40 hours or so listing, organizing, shipping to get through all 2,000 comics, if I had to guess. The good thing is they're in sets and organized, but, we, you know, since we could sell them easily and whatnot for a buck a piece to let somebody else make the profit, is it worth it to make that extra you know, thousand bucks or whatever it is. I don't know what it's gonna end up being. You know, we're asking that question to ourselves in the position of we have so much inventory already, but we also wanna make this video because we've wanted to learn the low hanging fruit in comics for a very long time. So this is just like, it's a win-win for us to learn and hopefully you guys to learn and uh, <laughs> come with us, let us do the work for you. And hopefully you guys will get a lot out of it as well. We've got an exciting update, one negative these these boxes so we have detective comics right here we had like a, a run from like 600 to 700 and then missing 700 to 730 and continues from 730 to like 750. well those middle ones were found in a completely different box yeah. so the downside is we have to really make sure uh, that we've gone through everything before we can really list stuff the upside is matt just found some batman animated comics from the 90s in this box and this box is been packed so yeah. far and i went over here and we had the complete run let me let me get it complete run of batman adventures and i saw a sold listing one through 36 missing number 12 that went for uh basically 200 bucks so that's fantastic because everything else we've been finding has been like two dollars a book for complete sets and i said well what's number 12 and do we have it here's number 12 and apparently that is the first appearance of harley quinn which means this book in a 9.8 went for $2,700 or in a 9.0, $580 or in rough shape raw, $200. This one is in very good shape. So I'm really excited because I was starting to get worried that this would not be worth the time, that all key, key issues would be pulled. Not the case. Even this book right here sold raw for 50 to 140, and this also is in fantastic condition. So we definitely have found some stuff. Sky Guy's excited about it. Yeah! <laughs> and I know we're gonna get the comments if we don't say it. There is an app called Key Collector. You can find a lot of key issues that way, um, which we could use. We're using eBay right now just for the sake of like, if we have a complete set, it's pretty easy to look them up on eBay. <laughs> we really gotta move that truck. What'd you find here? It's on bid, this one. 
on bid 50, 60, 62, 300. What is that graded? 9.8. Gosh, are we going to do a, a grading submission? We have to on number 12. Like, that could be. We might as well find like five or six to send, or maybe even seven. We have the subscription because we yeah. sent off the Nintendo Power, so. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might send five or six, maybe five, even six or seven. <laughs> you heard it um, here. <laughs> also, uh, somebody in the Discord a while back sent a picture or of a book. Maybe uh, we can get an affiliate link for it for this video. But it's essentially how to tell what your true comic like value can be and condition because there's a lot of random things. Yeah, that people are really really picky on, from my understanding, especially on eBay. Yeah. So it might help with grading knowledge as well. So if we find that book, maybe we'll include it. I don't know. I like it. Uh, one rule of thumb with comics, and this this is obvious, but the older the older the better. The older the more likely it is to be worth money. So I always like to look at like how much the comic costs. So this one was two dollars and ninety five cents. Uh, lower odds of being worth money. Where we had one a flash comic in here that was a twelve cent comic, meaning. It was 12 cents when it came out, so it's old, right? So 30 cents is older. 12 cent might mean it's from like the 60s. 30 cent might be like 70s. So 10 cent comics are like, you really might have some huge issues, especially if they're unpicked. We got lucky the fact that we had some crazy key issues of the late 90s, mid 90s. So this, this one alone is just 20 bucks. And that's number one in the set. Okay. So, yeah, you, you found the box right here. Yep. This is, like, the box that we want. Let's go. There's that. Only only one sold. But, okay. I don't know what condition that is. VF, that just means very fine. Yeah, all of these are going to be in great condition, like, the top yeah. of the... Do they factor in smell? Because these definitely have oh hobby shop run scent. I'm getting a headache. <laughs> <laughs> it's just normal comic pages smell. It's like new car, but comics. 25? I like it. So now another benefit of this video is going to be that we're going to grade some comics and go through that whole process, talk you guys through what we learned and what happens through all of it. So stay tuned for that. I just put the suit. We had the Superman Adventures set and we have both key issues, this being one of them. Basically, like they go for about 50 bucks raw, those two. So to me, it's like, okay, if it's worth 50 or over raw, 9.8, they're selling for like 200 plus. I don't know, we probably don't have 9.8s, but they're super clean. They've been stored in these boxes for years. So I'd like to see, you know, what that means translating into grading. And I think maybe it might be like 20 bucks a book to grade or something. So even if value increase, if it doubles on 50, then it's still worth it to grade. So uh, we'll, we'll do the whole thing and we'll get the books back hopefully in this very same episode and just full process this entire comic collection. It is the following morning. Matt has continued going through comics, and what did you just find in here? This, so this is Superman from uh, 87, and it goes 1 through 122. So I'm going to guess that that is not a complete set, because we've been running into that a lot. But it did end at the end of the box, so we might have more. Okay, so hopefully that ends up being the case. Like this Catwoman, we had 0 through 69. The set is 94. So I don't know if that's somewhere else in one of these boxes. Um, but we did find another key comic, the first appearance of Bane. I believe I put that up here. There you go. And that was about an $85 comic. So that one we're going to look at grading as long as the condition looks good. This collection would not have been worth it if they weren't like in order. <laughs> if we had to do all of this ourselves, it wouldn't be worth the time. But since they are, we've got a lot listed. So this is how we're doing them for inventory. So Alpel has this set up. So this will be in the custom label SKU on eBay. It'll be box one, dash one, dash two, dash three, all the way to 16 in this one. And then box two, dash one through 18 down there. And then box three, dash one. So that's a great easy way for them to store, easy to quickly pull the orders, um, which is a problem that had to be solved, and that's a great way to solve it, in my opinion. <laughs> we'll keep you posted if they actually sell. That's the big question I still have. Do modern comics like this sell quickly, or are they just going to sit? What do you think, Matt? Like, like in a week, will we see more or less than $200 of sales? I think less. He thinks less. What do you think, El Pal? I think I've already sent some offers on some, so I think... 
So you, you, you're saying that we already have watchers. We have already have watchers on the ones that are listed. So. Is that like oh, five listings, that. ten listings? It's probably like five listings. Most of yeah. them are coming today and tomorrow. Yeah, so we're going to have another 30 going live today and tomorrow. I guess we have watchers on some of the current ones that are live, which is only about five listings. But you guys know we're going to keep you posted. Okay, we're going to come at you guys with some resources and our expert tips. One thing that we've realized is that DCFandom.com Great way to realize if you have a complete set like this one, the dark, this is the Eclipso set, volume one. And according to the website, it's one through 18 and that is what we have. So we have a complete set here. I just found another key issue. So the Spectre set number 54, I quickly found out was the key issue. And we have the complete set here. So we're gonna grade this key issue and sell this without it. But if it was a complete set, it was going for 330 bucks. So. This is, I'm encouraged. It's becoming more and more worth it. A lot of times if you get a collection, it will have the key issues pulled and this one did not. So that's very encouraging to see. But here's our experts tips in comics. And this is Steezy in the Discord. He's been dealing in comics for many years and knows quite a bit. Um, so he just gave us some bullet points here. First one, Bronze Age books can have some value as well. I wouldn't rule them out. That's a good one. Silver Age and Gold Age are like the older ones. Bronze Age, we honestly have some bronze, a lot of Bronze Age in here and then even newer, I think. So we are discovering that to be true. Some books that have detached covers, missing pages, or even just a single page can command a high price, especially when graded. So like Amazing Fantasy 15, First Appearance of Spider-Man. If you have really notable books, even in rough shape, they can be worth money. Certain modern comics uh, with cover variants and stuff can command higher value, but they're not common. So we, we have had some cover variants in our, so far and we're finding that to be true as well. Emphasis on the grade slash condition is a must. Anyone serious about comics should have the Overstreet Guide to, to Grading Comics. So there you go, there's a resource. It looks like it's 35 bucks. I don't know, something like that. Another point, if you're going to touch on buying collections, unless there's a decent amount of minor and major keys, you want to buy at 15 to 30 cents a book just to be safe. And then he says, selling comics at conventions is one of the best ways to be profitable in the space. If you got a lot of bulk, uh, I guess conventions is a great way to move a buck or two a comic. Selling comics online and expecting top dollar is very difficult unless you take a million photos and have taught yourself how to essentially be a professional grader. So condition seems to be very, very important by what he's saying. And then CGC and CBCS are top dogs for grading books. CGC will not recognize signatures or autographs on books unless they're officially witnessed, but CBCS will. So based on what I'm seeing in comp, CGC is absolute king. Uh, if you're relating it to cards, they're like PSA, uh, which is king of cards for grading. That's what we're definitely gonna go with, but I guess if we had comics with signatures, CBCS would be the way. So those are the expert tips. Um, take note of those if you find comic collections or have the opportunity to buy them. Those are the things you're going to want to know. And uh, of course, we're going to let you guys know what our comics end up grading and what sales end up happening. I have two more complete sets right here to check. So I'm excited to see what those are going for. Well, we got through them a little faster than I thought. So just these boxes right here and that one are going to be like the ones that were random that weren't in sets that we might just wholesale and clear those out as quickly as possible. And then we have all of these sets yet to be listed. You know, we were hoping that maybe as we got through more of the boxes, we would complete some of these sets. Like this one is zero to 89 out of 134. That did not end up being complete. Same with Green Lantern. Actually, that ended up being one through 13. We initially had 60 through 113. So we did find one through 59. Um, but yeah, lots of partial sets. I imagine that these will be slower sellers, but you know, we'll, we'll see. This one is just missing 47, which is sad. <laughs> Let's get all these listed and hopefully stuff will start selling. We basically spent two days on this drafting, probably, gosh, I don't even know how many hours, 12 hours, probably, probably 30 hours is what it will have taken to go through everything and list everything. Uh, meaning we uh, will factor in about 10 hours for the rest of the job and shipping and everything. This was a lot of work, but it actually went faster than I expected. 2,000 comics. Everything on the tables is in lots, in some of these boxes, really big lots. You know, the best things that we found was the potential $500 first appearance of Harley Quinn comic. 
And like five or six other fifty dollar ones, so we're gonna get those sent off for grading. Alpal's gonna finish pictures on all of these lots, like this good old Dark Knight one through one hundred eighteen lot right there. And a lot of these will sell for like an average of two dollars a book, I think. So one hundred eighteen books, we might get like two hundred and forty bucks for it. A sweet mercy. <laughs> Matt's glad that these were organized in sets because it would have been impossible otherwise. No way. And the most valuable lot that we listed was this Batman lot, the original Batman line from 457 to 566, plus the annuals from that range. I think I listed it for like six or 800 bucks and it might get four to 500. So that's pretty darn good and uh, crap mall. So we've talked about XYAB a lot. If you're not using them and you're selling video games, you gotta get on it. Use our link down below for $50 off your first order of 100 or more. We back them, we completely believe in them, and we, we use them every month, every almost every week in our business. So check them out, use that link below. We were able to sell off all of the randoms, and I'm gonna be honest, as I was looking through some of these, especially in this box, I was finding a lot of $10 books, but they're just singles, and they're ones that we didn't wanna deal with personally. So we ended up selling them on Whatnot, and I think we did pretty well. We got about 85 cents a book, and the thing is, they're all gone. So it was about $360, um, maybe maybe closer to four or 500. I can't remember exactly how many there were. But that that's solid, you know, we'll take it. They're gone, and somebody else is gonna make good money on those doing the work. It's just we already did so much work, um, you know, listing all of this stuff in lots and collections on eBay, and that was that was all the work we wanted to do. We needed to we needed to save time on the rest of it. So that's just a little bit of like, all right, how do you get rid of the the stuff that you don't want to list? Now, there's one key tip here that I think is important. If you want to be able to get rid of the stuff that you don't want to list, you have to leave some meat on the bone, you have to leave some good stuff in there. So a lot of these five to ten dollar books, ten, even ten to twenty dollar books, we left in there and we sold them at less than a dollar a piece. And we tried to get a dollar piece, I had to get creative and say, all right, I'll throw in 20 free books if you buy these hundred, stuff like that. The guy that bought them is actually somebody that we know, he's a Discord member, he's fantastic. And he's bought a ton of stuff from us on whatnot and made a lot of money because we do truly leave a lot of goods quality in there. Sometimes we sell things completely unpicked. That's just a way that, you know, you can turn and burn, make your money, and then they can also make theirs. You gotta be willing to let other people make money too. And that is the best thing for this resale business when you have those types of connections where everybody's making profit. Uh, you know, that keeps the money flowing for everybody. That makes it so you can still sell stuff easier and also so they can sell and buy stuff easier. So that's just the way to do it. And I'm excited about that. Unfortunately, though, nothing else has sold from all these things listed. They, I believe everything is live now. Uh, at least for a day. Maybe, maybe we got more going live today because we had a lot of listings. But uh, we've got a weekend coming up here. I'm hoping some stuff will sell. We did get an offer on the Flash comic books for 150, but there was 150 books and we were asking 300. I countered at 250. We'll see if that goes through. Uh, but of course, I'll keep you posted and I'll talk to you guys on my end on Monday, but it'll be probably the next clip you see. Well, guys, the weekend has happened and finally we got some comic sales. I'm pretty excited about some of them. So we sold this Superboy lot for 40 bucks. Not too great there, but uh, nice that it's gone. And then this Superman sale, I'm very excited about 175 bucks. I believe this was a run with like no missing issues in that run. So that's a good sale. The Green Lantern Mosaic Complete Set of 18 went for 40 and shipping is on top of all these. Nightwing went for $30, that was a smaller set. The Batman Gotham Adventures good sale is probably like 10 or 12 books sold for 64 bucks. And I believe we pulled a key issue out of that. I can't remember if this is the one with the Harley Quinn or not. Number 12, let's see if 12 is here. Oh no, okay, so it's not. It's number 60 or $64. And then this Green Lantern, just kind of random books, went for 32 bucks. And uh, we're finally getting some sales. Hopefully more of the big sets will sell, but we're at least we're in the books on some comic sales. Two more comics sold the following morning, comic lots. They both sold for 50 bucks a piece. So the Flash lot of 15 sold for 50 bucks. They were marked at 40 and 20 and 30 and pretty high. So certainly didn't get what they were marked, but 50 bucks is a good sale for 15 books. 
And then Batman and Spider-Man, these two sold for 50 bucks. So that's a fantastic sale. Now we're still awaiting um, grades for the CGC comics we sent off. I'm hoping they'll be back fairly soon. It's supposed to be a pretty quick return time. And that will kind of determine like how great these comics were or not. Um, I'm happy to see some of the small sales go through, but we really need to start seeing some of the big lots sell for me to be confident in our strategy of selling comic books. But I'm thankful that we do have some sales under the belt. It's a month and a half later, and I will say that some of the big comic lots have sold. We've definitely probably had like seven or eight hundred dollars of comic sales from that collection in the last month and a half. Uh, there was a couple like two hundred dollars. We just had a two hundred twenty-five dollar one, and that was like a lot of thirteen. So that was a really good sale on a Batman set. Um, but the graded comics are back. CGC, here's what I have to say. This is a very bittersweet return. It's a, my first one ever for comics, a great learning experience, and it gives me quite a lot of insight into uh, what this will be like moving forward. I'm gonna pull them out one at a time so you guys can see. A reminder, we had seven books sent off for grading. I feel like the price, I can't exactly remember the price, I might have said it in this video, per book. But, I think it will have been worth it once you see what we got. But there you go, Batman Adventures. Mad Love. So it's got Harley Quinn on the front, 9.6 white pages. Now we're hoping for 9.8s in the comic world, but a 9.6, definitely still a worthwhile grade. And that's phenomenal. I'm very, very happy with that. We'll take it. Is there any point it's not worth it? I would say certainly under nine on a modern book. I haven't done enough research, um, but yeah, we're, we're hoping for 9.4 and above really on these types of like 90s modern. Now there was one huge book in this collection and that was Harley Quinn's first appearance. That was the most expensive, like three to 500 bucks raw. We have it graded, um, but we're gonna start with the other ones. There you go, that's what we wanna see. 9.8 Spectre number 54. This was a key appearance um, and it had good value. You see, the origin and first appearance of the new Mr. Terrific. I love that they mark that. I also love these holders and their shipping. Good, good on CGC. They're doing it right as far as comics go. Uh, next one is Batman Adventures number one. 9.8. That's Batgirl Adventures. Oh yeah, Batgirl Adventures. Uh, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy appearance. That's super cool that they do notes like that. And then Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like him. <laughs> uh, next one, 9.8. White pages again. This is Vengeance of Bane, special number one, origin, and first appearance of Bane. I feel like, I don't, I, I don't remember what this was, raw 50 to 70 maybe, but I think this puts it over $500 in value. So all these 9.8s add hundreds of dollars in value. Even if we spend 100 bucks a book to grade, I think it was more like 50 or 60 super super worth it in those cases another 9.8 white pages superman adventures number 21 super girl adventures see it says okay there you go a little confusing <laughs> that's weird yeah um no special notes on that one but it is number it must be some sort of first appearance or something it's the mac and cheese back <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome first appearance i definitely of, ate those as a kid batteroni and cheese all right we got two more books Another 9.8. Superman Adventures number five. First appearance of Livewire in comics. So, again, huge value increase. Insane. And the last book, where the bitter comes in. 9.6, 9.8 on six of the seven. The most important book from the same collection. Didn't look any different on a quick glance. 7.5, which is heartbreaking. It's the first appearance of Harley Quinn. Um, the grader put some notes on it. it basically, it looks like it was pressed or folded or... S s I don't know what the, what the terminology was, but my thought is that this one might be worth, like, cracking and then paying for the pressing service, which we, we did on a Nintendo Power that we sent off a long time ago. We still don't have that one back, funny enough, because we get sent these way after... Um, but they, they provide that service, and if we can increase this to an 8 or an 8.5, let me tell you, if this would have gotten a 9.8, $3,000 book. It was three to $500 raw. In this condition, a 7.5, they're sold all day for 500 plus. 
So it's still a value increase and it's a very safe sale that's not gonna get returned because it's already graded, you know what you're getting. So still worth it to grade. I guess I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you think we should do? Should we crack it out of here and have it pressed and maybe see if we can get an 8.0 or above? Or should we just leave it and sell it? Uh, that's the question, but grading comics in this example, very well worth it if they look clean and minty. Turns out they are. I wasn't sure if we'd get like 9.0s, 9.2s, or, and if like 9.8s were reserved for comics that have truly never been touched. Apparently that's not the case. This was a very clean collection. I'm thrilled about it. My end thoughts are that this was worth doing. It was worth a deep dive into these books. Obviously the key appearances in big comics made it very well worth it, but even with the lots that have sold, we're maximizing our business hourly rate even more by having done that. I would, I would say only do it with the right collection. If you're confident it's unpicked and the condition is good, worth it. If they're 90s books and they look picked and they're not like series runs, probably not worth it. Probably just move those as quickly as you can and move on. That's my thoughts. This was our Comics Deep Dive. Hopefully you guys liked it. Please hit the like button if you did. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.